The scripture readings this morning are from the Psalm 40 and John 1. Psalm 41 through 11. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the desolate pit, out of the miry bog, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. <clears throat> Happy are those who make the Lord their trust, who do not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. You have multiplied, O God, my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell to them, they would be more than can be counted. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, here I am. In the scroll of the book it is written of me, I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. See, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hidden your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. Do not, O Lord, withhold your mercy from me. Let your steadfast love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. And from John. <coughs> The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He, on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Here ends the reading. I waited patiently for the Lord. Sometimes our translators don't really do us the greatest service. Our version of this psalm says that, patiently, I waited on the Lord. Now, somehow the circumstances that the psalmist describes, being stuck in a desolate pit or a miry bog, don't seem to lean toward waiting patiently. How many of you patiently wait for help when you're in real trouble? Patiently wait for test results or for a phone call that may have life-changing news for you. Patiently wait for the doctor to come out when a loved one is in surgery or for help to arrive in an emergency. The Hebrew text of this uh, first line actually reads, Waiting, I waited for the Lord. Waiting, I waited. Now that could be translated, patiently I waited, but there are others who say that that's more likely should be translated impatiently. I waited for the Lord. In other words, I had been waiting and I was still waiting for God to act. 
And that seems to me to be just a little bit truer to our own experience in life. But then I'd like you to notice how quickly the psalmist goes on to tell the rest of the story, to tell of the saving acts of God. God lifted me out of the miry bog I was in and put me safe on a rock and then put a new song in my heart. And the rest of the song pretty much goes on to say that the psalmist has been singing this new song. He has sung, he has told of his encounter with the living God to all those around him. The old song, the song of distress, has been replaced with a new song of praise. And that makes me wonder, could it be that we sometimes experience spiritual uh, depression or spiritual malaise because we aren't willing to let go of the painful misery or our painful history and sing the new song that God has put in our hearts. Instead, we rehearse the old song too many times. I'd like us to consider just a few things this morning in our time together. What song do you sing to yourself concerning your relationship with God? Do you think you have a song worth singing? And do you sing that song to anyone besides yourself? What song do you sing to yourself? Do the psalmist's words resonate with you at all? Do you see God as your protector, your defender, your rescuer, your savior? Do you really get way down where it is most important how much God loves you? I have known people who have lived their whole lives going to church, trying their best to be good enough or to do good enough things and yet never really feel worthy of God's love. If your relationship with Jesus is a real relationship, it has its ups and downs. <coughs> but you will know, bottom line, that God does love you. God does not desire a relationship with us built on shame or on guilt or even on need. God knows us better than we know ourselves, and you know what? He's decided to love us anyway. Isn't that amazing? I mean, when you think about that, isn't that amazing? God knows every word before we say it, every deed before we do it, every thought that we think, even the ones that we wish we didn't think. And God decides to love us anyway. Because that is what God does. That is who God is. So if you are hoping that someday you will be good enough for God's love, give it up. You won't, but you've already got that love anyway. God gave his son for you. Christ died for our sins before we even committed them, knowing that we would. That proves how deep God's love for us is. So I'd like to ask you some questions, and I'd just like to, you to just raise your hands quickly. How many of you had a real firm before and after experience with Jesus Christ in your life? You know, before you knew nothing about God or about Jesus or anything, and then one day somebody told you you had an experience, and after that, life was completely different. Can anybody say that they had an experience like that? Met a couple. How many of you grew up in the church? Walked away from the church for a while and then found your way back. A few more can say that. How many of you grew up in the church and can't think of a time when Christ wasn't a part of your life? Probably the majority of us. And that is where I thought that most of us would land. Most of us have never known a time when Christ wasn't a part of our life. And yet we live... We live right in the middle of a mission field that is very different from that. We live among people who have virtually no experience with Christ. People who don't even know the basic story other than how they have seen it portrayed on television. And that's not always very accurate. I think that many of us who have grown up in the church all of our lives aren't sure we have a very captivating story to tell. We don't have a lot of drama in our relationship with God. And I also believe that we are wrong about that. Our whole experience of God is built on a relationship with Christ. And the thing about relationships is that they do change over time. 
Even if you were baptized as a baby, were singing Jesus loves me as a toddler, and you were in church every Sunday with your parents and you continued that on into your adult life, you don't have any kind of dramatic conversion story to tell of how your life was a mess before you met Jesus and it became beautiful afterwards. And I, you know, I just kind of wonder about some of those stories anyway. But even if you don't have any of that, you still have a story to tell. If your relationship with Jesus is a real relationship, it will change over time. You develop a history. Think of the other relationships in your life. I met Lee when we were in college. And not long after we began dating, we were pretty much inseparable. And I can tell you that on the day that I married him, I really didn't think that it was possible to love that man any more than I did that day. But I have found out in the 35 years since then that it is. It is possible to love him more than I loved him on the day that I married him. And I think that Lee feels the same way. At least he says he does. <laughs> But I also know that if he were here today and he were totally honest, he would have to tell you that there have been days in the past 35 years when he has thought to himself, what was I thinking when I married that girl? <clears throat> I think all of us who have been married for any length of time know the truth in that statement, don't we? We have a story, Lee and I have a story now that we didn't have the day that we got married 35 years ago. We have a history, and that has changed our relationship, and it has given us a new story. As I was thinking about this, I remembered this song by Ellen Jackson, a country music singer, um, that, a song that hit the top of the charts almost immediately, and I think it hit the charts so hard because it resonated so well with so many people. <coughs> the song is called Remember When, and it's a love song. And I just want to share just two verses of that song with you, and I'm not going to sing them because I don't want to ruin this song for you. But the verses are, remember when old ones died and new were born, life was changed, disassembled, rearranged, we came together, fell apart, and broke each other's hearts. Remember when? Remember when the sound of little feet was the music we danced to week to week? Brought back the love, we found trust, but we'd never give it up. Remember when. That's not a song for young couples when they're just starting out. They can't sing that song with integrity because they don't have the history yet. That's a song that you sing after you've lived some life together. And it points out that relationships change. And rarely do they go according to plan. And our relationship with God also changes as we develop a history together. And I would say that probably rarely does it go according to our plan. I think our relationship with God often goes according to God's plan. But our plan isn't always God's plan. Our song, based on our relationship with Jesus Christ, changes over time. We discover as we live in that relationship what it means to trust God with our whole selves. We learn wisdom that we didn't have way back when. The last line of this song that we just heard, I think, is rather touching. After extolling his song of praise and talking about how he has sung this song in the congregation, he has told of God's saving acts in his life, the psalmist says, please keep me safe. Even as he sings his song, this psalmist knows that life can be precarious, and it can change in a moment. He might have his feet planted securely on the rock right now, but that can change. Yet his history, his history with God, the things that he has learned over time, walking with God, have shown him who it is that you trust, where his security lies, and who he goes to when times are tough. I don't know each of your songs. I know that some of you have experienced a history of God walking with you through trials and sorrow. I know that some of you may ex be experiencing that right now. Others of you may have experienced God nudging you out of your comfort zones and into an area of ministry that you find challenging. 
Maybe some of you live for adventure and you have shared many of those adventures with God right alongside you. But I would bet that some of you have a song that isn't particularly full of a lot of drama. It might be a quiet song of love and devotion, but it's an important song. Whatever your song, don't ever think that your song isn't worth singing. And that brings us to our last point. Are you singing your song? When God puts a song in our heart, we are meant to sing it. We are meant to share the good news with each other and with those who haven't heard anything like our tune before. And I hope that you'll really think about this, what I'm saying, because I think that it is more important now than ever before in our lifetimes that we sing our song. We give you thanks, O oh God, that you have given us the desire to do your will, to be generous in our praise and in our gifts and in our love for others. Use these gifts we bring to proclaim good news and restore people to Christ Jesus. Amen.